Hello, Steve Dennis here, and today we're going to share with you about the basic concepts of the Law of Attraction. Are you ready? Let's grow. Hello, Steve Dennis here, and I'm super excited for the first time ever to be sharing um, through these videos an amazing subject matter that I'm just, again, just overjoyed to, to share with you because of the impact that this subject matter has had in my life, uh, in the lives of my clients. And wow, what can I say? This is gonna help you and I today with our personal growth. A simple introduction to the law of attraction, okay? <laughs> Bob Proctor said it this way, the law of attraction happens to be the secondary law to the law of vibration. So today I'm gonna to give you some concepts that will help you to have a better working knowledge of, again, the law of attraction as well as the law of vibration. You know, so for an example, Oftentimes, people have asked me the question uh, because several, a lot of people are familiar with my work and they know about the fact that I've been involved with uh, universal laws for the past 15 years now. So oftentimes, I get asked the question, Steve, what is the law of attraction? And, <laughs> and here's, the, here's the flip side of it. that tr The truth of the matter, the concept of the law of attraction goes all the way back to the beginning of time. I mean, literally, you can find I examples of the law of attraction in your, in your Bible, <laughs> okay? But here's my whole point. What is the law of attraction? The law of attraction says like attracts like, okay? In other words, you'll attract on the outside of you what you are thinking on on the inside of you. I love, I love to say it this way. If I can think it up here, I can have it out here. You will attract into your life that thought process that you're carrying in your life on a regular, ongoing basis. And so, for an example, uh, explaining to you the concept of the, of the law of attraction, uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, like attracts like. And on top of that, my friend, check this out. You and I happen to be an energetic, vibrational match to whatever it is that you have a strong desire for. <laughs> Let me give you a quick example so, and to make it more practical for you, okay? So for an example, I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions, okay? Do you use words of victimization? For an example, something that is done to you or, uh, you know, do you, do you describe what is happening in your life? For an example, for me, years ago, I was real big on talking about the fact that I had a victim story that my father was sick with Alzheimer's by the time I was 15 years old. That was a victim story. It was what I kept telling myself over and over again. Even as a kid, I would compare my dad to the, you know, to, to, to fathers of some of my, some of my friends. And I would, I would be thinking and, and, and saying to myself, I wish my dad was young like Larry's dad or Bobby's dad or Paul's dad. Okay, so I was using words of victimization. My question to you again, the second question is, do I use words that indicate a lack of choice? Let me say that again. Do you, do you use words that indicate that you have a lack of choices? For example, I have to go to work. Or do I use words that reflect that I'm, I am in charge of my time? Like instead of saying I have to go to work, how about I choose to go to work or I get to do what I get to do? Oh my goodness, let me, say, let me share with you that in my life, what I've noticed about my personal growth, it was a wonderful day when I changed my language, when I switched my language from I have to, to more of I choose to, okay? And here's what I know, my friend, you and I will attract events, we will attract resources, we will attract people in our lives that are in alignment with, with that most dominant thought that we have. I said this years ago in 2009, by the way, is at a time in my life that I had black hair and no gray. <laughs> but one of my favorite statements I said back in 2009 is that you will always move in the direction of your most dominant thought. Oh, that 2009 Steve Dennis said it back then and I'm still saying it now years later because I still believe it to be true. My friend, you and I 
will move in the direction of our most dominant thought. Now, why is that important? Let me share, let me tell you why it's important. Because when you think about the word attraction, okay, if you, if you, if you look at the last six letters of the word, A, C, T, I, O, N, it has a rhythm to it, doesn't it? Let me try it again. A, C, T, I, O, N. Oh, if I was a rapper, I would rap it to you right quick. A, C, T, I, O, N. Action. That's my point. In other words, the best way for you and I to see this amazing law, the law of attraction, moving on your behalf is when you hear something, think something, and you're saying something over and over and over again, but then you start to move. You, you take action. You take what one of my friends call you, call, you, you, you take inspired action towards that desire. And before you know it, it starts to show up in your life and on your behalf. Oh, it's exciting. Okay. So exciting. So real quickly, what I love about this, this subject matter is that get this gang, nothing happens until you take action. Another playoff of words. If you really want to be in a place of satisfaction from the law of attraction, then you must take action. Take action on changing the way you think. One of my favorite quotes from Wayne Dyer is, if you change, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will surely change. My friend, application time. When you and I change the way we think, you're going to notice that resources, relationships, and even revelations are going, to, are going to flow into your life simply because of the fact that you're in that state of vibrating at a certain level and you are attracting the right type of people, the right type of circumstances, the right type of opportunities will start to flow in your life simply because of the fact that you're taking inspired action. So here's my, my invitation to you. As we get ready to wrap this up, I want to challenge you to notice what type of thinking are you vibrating at? Is it positive or is it negative? Is it, are you visualizing the life that you would desire? Or are you still caught up in looking at that old, that old pattern or that old program that oftentimes many of us have been so accustomed to having? So I want to encourage you with this very simply. If you, if you want more, let's say for an example, if you want more love in your life, give more love. If you want more compliments, give more compliments. Whatever it is that you want to have more of, give more of that. Here's my last thought about the power of the law of attraction. Let me give you, let me give you a quick story that kind of helps to solidify this last point, okay? About a year and a half ago, I was sharing with a group of teenagers at a leadership, uh, a leadership conference with a local chamber. And to my amazing surprise, I had about 26 teenagers in that room that day, and I passed out an index card. And I had all of them to write at the top of the index card, my gratitude list. And I shared with them that I, went, I, I get the, the instruction was to give them a minute and a half to write down as many, uh, write down whatever, everything that came to their mind that they were grateful for. The people, the places, and the things that they were grateful for. They did that. At the end of this exercise, I had all of them to stand up and to mill around the room and to connect with other teenagers in the room and to share and to compare their gratitude list. Now, oftentimes when I do that exercise, I will oftentimes, you know, give out an, an instruction out there, maybe three, three minutes. I will say, okay, Time's up. Gang, that particular group of teenagers, it took me over 10 times of saying time's up before they finally settled down and, and sat down to listen to my next set of instructions. I had fun with them because I shared with them that the, I'm glad that they took their time. I'm glad that most of them never heard me say time's up because it showed that the energy of the room shifted when, when those teenagers were in that state or that place of gratitude. Here's what I know. Gratitude happens to be 
one of the number one principles that you and I can incorporate that will allow you to, have, to experience more joy, more abundance, and more energy in your life. If you don't believe me, try it out. What are you grateful for? Take the time to write out your gratitude list and just notice how the energy within your body and your mind will shift from grudge and from grief into gratitude. And my friend, you will see the power of the law of attraction. Thank you very much.